Yarra Pinot. Hunter Valley. Margaret River Chardonnay. Margaret River and uh, Yarra Valley. Mornington. The Yarra Valley. Orange. Mornington Peninsula. Barossa. Rieslings from Eden Clare. Beechworth. Chardonnay from Margaret River. Orange. Margaret River Chardonnay. Orange. You know, the uh, last couple days we've seen a lot of Pinot. It's showing a lot of, of really solid oil influence and a lot of winemakers that are really seeking to better themselves by looking at uh, prime examples uh, of previous history as opposed to making a more Australian forward style. And it's showing one in the, the way that they're making their wine um, out of the Mornington like what we've tasted over the last couple of days. And also uh, some of the nicer wines that we've seen from other areas, Pinot, Pinot is really showing quite well. Uh, the Yara Pinots are, are really progressing and Mornington's doing a really good job with Pinot Noir. Uh, I really enjoyed the Hunter Valley with the uh, Simeon Blanc, but I have to say that I think that the best region for me has been uh, uh, Beechworth because I wasn't expecting anything from that region. It's a pretty small region and we went to visit Giaconda and it was just an amazing, amazing time. We had like beautiful Chardonnay, we had like old vintages as well. We had the Pinot Noir, we had the Shiraz as well. And we had some uh, Owek Nibiolo that just were fantastic. So I think my pick would be Beachport actually. It would be the Simeon from the Hunter Valley because it's quite impressive to see uh, how those wines can, can evolve and like you can keep those wines for 10 to 20 years and they just look, look fantastic. We had like a 94 uh, from uh, Brokenwood that was fabulous. So. The thing I think that surprised me the most was actually Margot River Chardonnay. Now, I've always enjoyed the wines from there anyway, but uh, the Chardonnay from there was probably some of the most exceptional white I think that we had overall. I mean, as a class on the trip. Uh, on the trip, we got a chance in my group to, to visit a lot of spectacular places, some very uh, small production places, some out of the way places that really uh, coming from uh, Texas, I really wouldn't get a chance to see otherwise. And uh, I'd say the Margaret River and uh, Yarra Valley probably surprised me the most, uh, being the Cabernet and Margaret River and the Pinot Noir in the Yarra Valley. I think they're two very up-and-coming regions. They have a little bit of a cooler climate style, a really rich style, but um, it's not that in-your-face, jammy, kind of uh, overpowering style. They, they pair very well with food, uh, a lot of finesse, a lot of length of age. <clears throat> Some of the aged wines we tried on this trip in those areas were definitely my favorites. Surprises. Uh, you know, I knew that Giaconda was doing amazing work, but being in the cave and tasting things in barrel, um, that was surprising. Because those wines, um, pre-release, look fantastic. And you can tell he's building an amazing wine start to finish. Yeah. They, were, they were ready. They were, they were great. Yeah, that was... That is awesome. And then also hearing his reflections on what's happening in Burgundy, um, talking a little bit in another region, um, in Mornington, to the viticulturist from 10 Minutes by Tractor, hearing the differences in his management between his bio vineyard and his traditional vineyard, that was also really illuminating. So, yeah, those, those were the highlights of, of the trip for me, um, and the things at least is expected, yeah. The most surprising region would have been the Yarra Valley. Um, just all about texture, kind of a contradiction of term of cold climate, hot climate, lots of uh, exciting, sexy acid, and lots of big, rich, gripping, focused fruit. Well, the region that surprised me the most was probably orange. And that's probably because I really hadn't heard of orange. I didn't know anything about orange or the wine that came out of Orange. We spent uh, an entire day and actually a night there. And it was really interesting because we got to see a lot of the smaller producers uh, in Orange. We visited uh, Philip Shaw and I really enjoyed uh, a rosé that he had. He had a Bordeaux rosé. It was beautiful. Uh, we visited Ross Hill. Interesting gentleman. Uh, you know, he had a great Cab Franc. I thought that could have been sat on for a few years. Would have loved to have taken that back to the U.S. And then, uh, you know, Charlotte, one of the ladies from Mayfield Wineries that hosted us for dinner that night had, you know, she had some really interesting wine. She had a wonderful sparkling wine. Uh, so I, I think that Orange
Orange is probably the, the region that surprised me most out of everything just because I knew so little about it. Um, as far as the varietal that surprised me the most about Australia, it didn't really surprise me here, it surprised me during my immersion class and that was Chardonnay. And coming from the States, you're so used to the California Oak Bomb Chardonnays that are so round and so oaky and you just can't even stand them and you just want to slit your throat. But when we come over to Australia, they're really trying to preserve their acidic backbone. Um, even if they do use oak, even if they do uh, let their wine stay on the leaves, they have a, uh, a certain bit of roundness to them, which, which a lot of people expect from Chardonnay, but they, pres they preserve their acid. And that was, that's what makes their uh, Chardonnay so different from us. So that's probably the bridal that I, that I really enjoy most of it. Coming from uh, Oregon and the Willamette Valley, I think that I'm fairly cynical when it comes to Pinot Noir. And I feel that I was absolutely blown away by the quality and consistency of um, Pinot Noir, specifically, I think, from the Victoria, uh, state of Victoria, uh, Mornington Peninsula. Um, the wines were beautiful, juicy, bright red fruit, um, and then as well the sparkling wine production that's happening in the state of Victoria as well as Tasmania. Beautiful, beautiful sparkling wines with gorgeous acidity and, and length and the entire trip was amazing, but I think that seeing Pinot Noir we know that Australia makes amazing uh, Shiraz, we know that Australia makes amazing Chardonnay, but Pinot Noir, we don't think of Australia as being cool climate and the Pinot Noirs were stunning. I liked, um, you know, I was a little bit familiar with the local regions uh, moving into the area, but I liked uh, getting to know uh, within the area. I liked being able to, to see the sandy soils of the kind of southern, uh, eastern side of Barossa. Uh, that were um, you know, kind of showcasing Grenache, and it was interesting to see how that soil type um, made kind of lighter style uh, in terms of certainly uh, the aromatic wine. It's very savory. That was pretty cool. Today morning with Peninsula, we could see like a little kind of north to south kind of comparison. It was pretty groovy. Warmer up north, a little cooler in the south. That was pretty fun. So kind of getting a chance to see the um, uh, you know, very local diversity, which uh, Australia is trying to promote right now, uh, very much firsthand. I think for me, I loved sampling the Rieslings from Eden and Claire, uh, particularly side by side. You know, we, we learned in class and, and most of us already knew that they were sort of benchmark regions for, for Riesling, but to have the opportunity to, to compare the two yes. um, and really notice the differences in terroir, I think I thought that the was pretty special. Yeah, the difference in the structure and the yeah. cities. Yeah. And the, and I thought Barroso was fairly interesting, especially the master class we had yeah. to taste wines from different uh, sub-regions in the Barroso uh, Valley and to see the differences in, in, in the structure. It would totally blow people's minds. Yeah, because Shiraz. people think that Barroso Shiraz would taste like this. It's just one big and juice, juice and fruit bomb. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Beechworth. Beechworth just blew my mind. I mean, from the Chardonnay to the Pinot Noir that was there, that was a slid in. A, a sort of an under the radar thing with Shiraz there also, but that should have been called Syrah, not Shiraz. Nebbiolo? Beautiful. And Nebbiolo, Nebbiolo coming online? Yeah. <laughs> Nebbiolo, a very, very good Nebbiolo. Uh, Hunter Valley Scent. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Life changing stuff that we need to get in the States. Yes. Um, yeah, really excellent, excellent production of, uh, of that. And and even, even Riesling done, you know, done crisp, clean, dry style, but that there's this, the curve. The Claire Valley curve, you know, that, that goes from one to two years, interesting, and then dumb phase three, four, five years, five, six, seven, eight, and up. Incredible. Totally different wine, fantastic production. You you would mistake it blind for something oaked or toasted in some fashion, and it just was extraordinary. So that was, it was magic. I mean, you know, Mornington's fascinating and, and, and interesting in terms of being able, after a two-week stint of, of the bigger stuff, so to speak, and the, and the real crisp, searingly kind of uh, enamel-stripping acid, white and the big, bold red, to go to Mornington where you've got Chardonnay and Pinot Noir playing quite well yeah. on, the, on, this, uh, on this continent, something that's not recognized as such abroad, uh, widely anyway. It's fantastic. Uh, Chardonnay from Martin River is probably what I would have to say. It surprised me quite a bit. 
Uh, I'm really excited about that. I was expecting to see the Cavs perform uh, stronger than what I thought they would, and I thought Chardonnay kind of was a nice, shining kind of uh, varietal for them. Um, as a as a region, I would have to say orange. Um, I don't think they're quite there yet, but they're burgeoning. They're coming out. I think there's a lot of potential there, and I think that's already being proven. Um, as a varietal, easily Chardonnay from Harvard. If you don't know about this, you need to start exploring the right uh, orange had some really like beautiful raw material. You could tell that they're like on the verge of doing something really, really cool up there. Uh, maybe it might not be for 10 years, I don't know, maybe hopefully sooner. Uh, but I thought that uh, orange uh, had some cool things to offer. Probably the biggest curveball was orange. And the uh, and definitely the Chardonnay and Pinot Noirs, as well as the Shiraz. And the uh, the intensity and the the, the just quality of the wines uh, that we taste up there were fantastic and just totally off the beaten track. Uh, varietals, sort of with regions, I, I think Margaret River Chardonnay. I think uh, you, you always hear you always hear Cabernet with, with Margaret River, and, and Chardonnay doesn't really fall on the map. And we've had years of crap Chardonnay coming out of, out of Australia, and we tasted the likes of Lewin Estate and then the Mosswood Chardonnay and. Uh, and the, the richness, but the, the, the steely acidity that, that, that is accompanying along with the wines. So yeah, the uh, Martin River Chardonnay to me was the one that, that uh, surprised me the most. I, I think I'm going to echo Brian um, at, at, about Margaret River. I think that um, what we heard while we were there that they said that Chardonnay was made in the in the field in the in the, in the vineyard, but Shiraz was made in the winery. And the, the, it was the Chardonnay that, that I think impressed me the most about about that region. We just heard today in this area how they they talked about oak fucked <laughs> about how, how a lot of a lot of Chardonnays have been oak fucked, and, and we didn't we didn't see that in in Margaret River that the, the, the Chardonnays were very delicate and, and bright and crisp and uh, you know balanced with acid, and, and I just loved it there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I will say Orange County, where we went, surprised me the most. I think that they are definitely in need of representation. They need to have, their wines are absolutely beautiful. They need to come to the States. Varietals of all across the board, Riesling, Sauvignon Blanc, Semillon, all of those. I've seen a couple of Pinot Blancs out there. And then, of course, all the